up to Law and Order Special Virus Unit, where this week we investigate a myxomatosis mystery. Today we're joined by Tilly, our latest potential victim of this viral assassin. It looks like you've got some reddening around your eyes. That's conjunctivus. And, oh no, you're pyrexic too. Definitely sounds like myxomatosis virus. Let's take a closer look. Our primary suspect is the myxoma virus, responsible for causing the rampant disease myxomatosis in European rabbit species. Myxoma is a pox virus with a double-stranded DNA genome encapsulated within a brick-shaped virion. We are searching for a virus matching this description. While enveloped DNA viruses typically do not survive well in the environment, pox viruses like myxomatosis are an exception and do survive well in the environment, so we should not underestimate it. As myxoma virus has spent a lot of time circulating in South America, South American rabbit species, such as the forest rabbit, only develop benign cutaneous lesions when hit because they are a natural host reservoir species. This is considered a relatively non-pathogenic infection. However, myxoma is relatively new to Europe, so all European rabbit breeds must remain on high alert. In these breeds, myxoma causes severe and often fatal generalized disease called myxomatosis. First spotted in Uruguay in 1898, myxoma has since made appearances in Europe, the United States, and Australia. Myxoma virus snuck into France illegally in 1952, allowing myxomatosis to rapidly spread across continental Europe. Myxoma was also introduced into Australia to control the non-native rabbit population, where it was initially a highly successful assassin. This is because Australia has no natural host reservoir species. Accordingly, authorities regard myxoma virus as a chronic and zoonotic pathogen. Risk factors for contracting myxoma virus include the proximity to wild populations of rabbits and outdoor housing where unsuspecting rabbits are exposed to transmission from mosquitoes and other biting or sucking arthropods. Rabbits can also catch this deadly disease through direct contact with infected rabbits, as the virus also sheds via secretions and skin lesions. To prevent infection in pet rabbits, we need to use mosquito netting around any outdoor hutches, house the rabbits indoors, and use vet-approved flea treatments. Also, avoid any contact with wild rabbits. Myxoma infects dendritic cells at the primary site of infection. It then circulates via the lymphatic and vascular systems throughout the body into secondary organs. Approximately four days after infection, victim rabbits develop clinical myxomatosis, characterized by conjunctival inflammation and elevated temperature. By six days, the infection will be accompanied by swelling in the anogenital region, cutaneous papular secondary lesions on the face and ears, and serous secretion from the eyes and nose. Late-stage infection at eight to ten days appears as a swollen head and face, swollen drooping ears, inflammation at the eye margin and conjunctiva, swollen closed eyelids, mycopyrrolent rhinitis, multiple discrete cutaneous swellings, and a grossly swollen anogenital region. The immune system of the infected animal progressively collapses, and the animal will usually die 10 to 14 days post-infection. An infection by the myxoma virus can be identified by observing clinical signs, taking a biopsy of the lesion, and by isolating myxoma from serum samples. At necropsy, victims' lymph nodes will be enlarged and often hemorrhagic. Additionally, liver necrosis and swelling of the spleen may be present. So Tilly, this doesn't sound too good. Good thing you have the special virus unit to help you out. Intensive supportive care can be offered for victims, but there is currently no known cure and euthanasia is often recommended. Myxoma virus is wanted dead or life attenuated, so please call our hotline for any leads and stay safe.